following broadcast was produced by the Lighthouse for the Blind in San Francisco as part of our Lighthouse Learning Library. Not all of you are going to be an entrepreneur, an inventor, take those kinds of risks. But all of you will take different kinds of risks, whether you're going to be a new accounts manager at a Wells Fargo in Pacheco or some other thing that's going to make your dream come true. And the lessons that Mike t talks about are generalizable. The enemy is just passivity. We're, we're not here like we discussed at the beginning of this summit to tell you what your way is or even to tell you how to get there. But we are here to tell you that staying where you are is probably not an option. And I've heard a lot of comments this week. It's overwhelming. There's a lot of, yes, it is. Um, maybe I'm not ready. Well, maybe you're not. But the seeds here all week have been planted about how to go forward. I think, that, I think some of these things like that bamboo plant we heard about at the very beginning are starting the little tendrils to extend. Because you cannot, uns once you've been through an employment summit like this, you can't unscramble that egg anymore. You've seen examples, maybe a few dozen examples now, of people who have followed their dream, whatever it is, and found a path. And we will not prescribe what that dream is, but we will be with you at the lighthouse in this community one-on-one -on -one to support you as long as you seize the day, take that action, confront things. I really appreciated Mike's honesty about fear and um, some of the low points of his life. We've all had those. But Mike didn't stop there. And we now have another Mike who's going to talk about what do you do? Can you wait all day and week and month and year for perfection. You know, this, this business, sometimes the SSI lifestyle is a curse because it's just enough money to let you to stay inert, trapped like an insect in amber. And meanwhile, your friends, sighted and blind, are moving forward inch by inch, getting money, having friends, getting houses, and all of that. And... I know that deep in our hearts, we want to do something about that. None of us are going to say that that reality and that conundrum is, um, isn't there. We've still got to press through. We've still got to crash through sometimes. And I must say that if you haven't read Crashing Through, you can do it in every format known to man. So Braille and Bookshare and NLS and commercial audiobook. It is an example of pressing through and finding a way. So let's hear our final address now from Mike Bullis on stop waiting for perfection and taking action. It's pretty much symbolic of what we've done this week. Mike? Wow. Um, you know, it's always, it's always so incredible to hear your personal heroes in life. Mike May uh, is just one of the people I uh, have such admiration for. Because, you know, when you watch somebody from a distance, you don't see all the struggles they go through. Uh, you know, you see them sort of move from, from, from wave to wave, sort of almost effortlessly from your point of view outside. And, uh, and yet, you know, that's not true. But uh, Mike has always been sort of one of my heroes as I watched him uh, in Oregon. I used to live in Oregon and then uh, watched him do other things. He's just an amazing person. And to, s to have the honor of sitting here and listening to him talk today and yesterday is, is more than words can say. Um, maybe you don't understand it, but it's always a struggle, folks. It's always difficult. It's always tough to meet those fears and to to say I gotta pick up my feet and, and do it again. Um, it, it's, it's always so refreshing and scary at the same time to see, to hear and listen to somebody like Mike May and then ask yourself, can I, can I do that? Can I be there? Um, can I pick up my life again? Um, I, I grew up as a, as a poor kid in Southeast Portland. Um, 
wasn't the ghetto. It was it was uh, sort of the white trash part of Portland, um, if you will, sort of low income, uh, low income, low expectations area. And um, well, okay. So just to give you a feel for that, it was where Tanya Harding, who's is the skater who who <laughs> who whacked her. Uh, uh, who whacked her opponent in the knee when she couldn't think she when she didn't think she could win she just took violence into it and um, not the prettiest environment and a uh, um, lot of a lot of failures and and a lot of not much to look up to um, early on I was I, I couldn't figure out what to do I was like well what am I gonna do who am I gonna be I'm a blind guy how can I how can I do these things and I'm kind of a negative thinker. Um, I thought, well, you know, if you don't do anything, you know, you'll end up at the workshop for the blind, and um, and uh, and you don't want to do that, so maybe you won't even end up there, Bullis, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe you'll just end up sitting at home. Uh, but I thought, well, okay, so so if that's where I might end up, I guess I really can't do much worse than that. So it doesn't really hurt to just keep trying stuff. And who knows, some of it might work, but you know, if the worst case is gonna happen anyway, who cares? And, I, and I'm telling you, that was the process I went through. If the worst case is gonna happen, then I guess I can't really make it any worse. So I might as well just try stuff and see what happens. And lo and behold, I discovered a few things along the way. I met people who had done it, blind people and sighted people who had done it. And I discovered a great lesson, and that was that if I could just hang around them for a while, um, I, I gained every time. I don't know about you, but I, I, for me, part of being here has just been being around people like Brian Bashan. Is he, he's one of my heroes. He's a personal, a person that I honor and respect so much for his heart, for his mind, for his grasp of the future, for his willingness to step out and do things that are new and different. Um, it's it's people like he and Mike May and other people that I just stand in awe of in so many ways, and yet over time you can't quite stand in awe because you know they're human just like you. That's the nice thing about being around people uh, and, and getting to know them. Grab these people because you know you'll see that they really are just ordinary people like you, right? That they put their shoes on the same way and 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 they do the same things every morning and they still run into stuff and and. Uh, and you know they've they've made every mistake you you've made and and yet they still make it i think you have to get to that place at some point that sort of that sense that you know we're all the same that we're all we're all doing the same things the difference i think for some of us is we actually decide to go ahead and do it and then for some of us we don't we stop we decide that the fear of failure is stronger than the failure itself, you know? We decide that, it's, that the fear is what gets us, that, that, that we'll just freeze. We freeze in the fear, don't we? Instead of just saying, well, you know, what's the worst that can happen? I can just fail. <laughs> but what's really weird about it is you don't. Over time, if you put enough stuff out there, you know, what's that about the blind pig and the acorn? You know, you put enough stuff out there, folks. If you do things, Good things will happen. Even, you know, it really is true. You don't, you can be a poor kid from Southeast Portland with, with alcoholic parents who beat him all the time, and you can still grow up to be what you think of as a pretty decent person. I think I'm kind of okay these days. And, and, and it didn't, I didn't have to come from big education and big money, and I didn't have to come from all those other things. You just keep doing things, and good things will happen over time and life becomes more and more interesting every day, more and more wonderful every day. But there have been several times when I've thought, you know, if I didn't take that next step, it wouldn't have happened. If I didn't just keep going. I remember one time I had gone through 50 resumes and I was really ticked because I didn't have a job and I was doing it the old fashioned way, just knocking on doors and saying, hi, I'm here to get a job. And they go, yeah, okay, thanks very much. <laughs> Pat me on the head and send me home. And I remember I went back to the people who printed my resumes and I said, give me 50 more. And something inside me said, I'm gonna get a job. And it wasn't, I hope I get a job, it was I'm gonna get a job. And I didn't give a damn if I did another thousand resumes, I was gonna get a job. And I got one the next day. And my conclusion about that was, 
that suddenly I wasn't out begging anymore. The question wasn't, will you hire me? The question was, I don't know who's going to hire me, but somebody is. I don't know if it's you or not. As opposed to, God, I sure hope you'll hire me. If you don't hire me, I don't know what I'm going to do. It was a feeling that came over me. It was a certainty that things, good things could happen. But it took that first 50 resumes, didn't it? And it took a lot of crying, and it took a lot of frustration to get to the place where suddenly I was certain that if I just did it long enough, something good was going to happen. And it ultimately did. Um, so anyway, I don't, know, I don't know how all that helps you. I, 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 I sometimes in the last couple of days have been so emotionally sort of frustrated to want to say to you something that would change your life, something that would change your world, something that, that would help you sort of get off the dime, so to speak, and, and take that next step. Because you don't have to take the right step. There may not even be a right step, you know? Look, Mike started out in inter international relations, and he makes GPSs. Hello. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you get from here to there. Uh, you're a banker, and then you're, you know, and it all weaves together over time. It's, it's always great to be able to tell the story later because, you know, it all looks like it fits together. But the truth is, yeah, who knows what it did, right? Um, I, and, uh, so I guess there's two points I would make. One, hang around successful people. Hang around people like Brian and other people because it will rub off. J.P. Morgan Somebody said to J.P. Morgan once, what would you do if you lost everything tomorrow? What would you do if you're just suddenly poor, you have no money, you have no, nobody knows who you are, you're just nothing? Oh, he said, he thought about it for a second and he said, see back in the early 1900s, they had elevator operators. He said, I'd become an elevator operator in a big building where there were lots of rich people. <laughs> and he said, because if I was the elevator operator, they would... Uh, they'd be in the elevator, and they'd be discussing really cool ideas, and I'd get to meet them. And not only that, I'd get to hear their ideas. And he said some of their, some of their throwaway ideas in the elevator would be, would be cool enough that I could go start again. And I thought, you know, that's so right. I've been, uh, I've been so fortunate over my lifetime to, 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 to grab on to really successful people, um, maybe in a way because of my negative sense of, you know, I'm not as good as they are, but <laughs> if I hang around them long enough, good things can happen. And yet I know and deep down I am as good as they are. Don't get me wrong. I, I, think you, I think you live a dual existence sometimes, don't you? You live an existence that says, um, Brian and I are colleagues and, and friends, and, and I respect and admire him so much, and, and then in the other part of you is, yeah, and he's really got it together, and, 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 um, and I, I, boy, I don't know whether I'm as cool as he is or not, but it's okay. You know, we're all a mix, aren't we? I think sometimes we kind of lie to ourselves, and we say, let's all say that today we're champions, or let's all say today that we're wonderful, and let's all, you know what, we're a mix every day. We're a mix of, I think I'm really good, and then I think I'm really screwed up, and sometimes we really are screwed up. <laughs> and, you know, see, in my view, it's all okay. It's all okay. It's okay for me to say, I really screwed up that thing, or or I feel really bad today, or whatever. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna work through that and get moving forward. Um, men have a tendency to push emotion away. Tend to have a tendency to not cry. Have a tendency not to feel as deeply sometimes as women do. We we learn a lot from you. I learn a lot from females and how you how you feel and sense. Um, so so for me, it's always been this goal of how can you feel deeply? How can you feel? with meaning, and then how can you take those feelings and turn them into the next step? How can you move forward with those feelings? We asked you for some homework uh, last night. Um, what were your next steps going to be? Uh, I want to get a, let's get a microphone out there, and let's, um, let's just go around. I want to hear, hear some next steps here. It's all about what are we going to do. It doesn't have to be right steps. It just has to be next, okay? Can I just walk up to people? Sure. Okay. Um, I'm just why don't you do it in order somehow so that they know who's coming next? And all right. I'm coming in order. Karen, I'm coming right. to you. Who are we going to start with? Karen? Okay. This is Karen Smiley from Santa Rosa. Um, I am going to go home, fix up my resume, and possibly I'm going to Oh, well, there's a couple things in my head that I want to do, but I'm going to go through the looking glass and present myself as a preschool teacher and hopefully get a job. Through the looking glass is like a daycare or something or, or a school or what? Help me out. It's a daycare center. Okay. Okay. So, Hi. so Karen. Yes. My only thought is um, add a few more schools in there because because you don't want to put if if that school says no, what are you going to do then? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> get, get a few more schools on the list. Okay? I'll get a few more schools. Good. Yes. Oh, uh, good. Thank you. 
When are you going to do this? Oh, um, as soon as I get home. So, well, wait a minute. You can't, you can't go see them tonight because I bet they're closed. <laughs> you know? so, so hang on. Let's talk about this. You're going to do up your resume. How long does that take to get your resume fixed up? A day or two? Um, I would say maybe three days. It's okay. three pretty days. much done. Almost. So, all right. So now it's Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday. All right. What are you going to do then on Tuesday? Tuesday, um, get it proofread, get a cover letter going, and go through in the phone book maybe and find different preschools. And okay, but you can contact that first one through the looking glass place. Yes. You can contact them when? What's the date? How about Friday? How about Wednesday? Wednesday. Okay, yeah. Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Wednesday, it is. Come on. All right, good. Right. Think about your cover letter and your resume both the same time over this weekend. Think about what you want to say in your cover letter about, um, about who you are and, and, and so forth. But mostly go down and visit. Can you go to see them? Um, yes, I think okay. we can. I mean, can you get a tour of the place? I will call and set up an informal interview possibly too. Sure. Okay. All right. You don't know whether you want to work for them or not, do you? Do you know much about them? Um, no. Well, then go in and visit with them and <laughs> chat with them, find out what they do. Yeah. Tell them you're thinking about getting in the daycare field and you just want to check them out, among other places, and, and don't take the pressure off yourself. I love informational interviews, folks, because you know what? I hate real interviews. <laughs> That's asking people to hire me and they might say no. But I can certainly go in and find out about my field and understand it. And by the way, you can't be phony about this. I think people misunderstand something. The informational interview is not, I really want a job, but I'm going to scam you, okay? If you do it for that reason, you're just a liar then. You're really doing it to find out about the field. You don't know whether you want to work for these people, but you really do want to, you do really, really do need to learn about the field and what's in it, right? There's Montessori daycare, there's regular schools, there's some kinds of daycare that you'd never want to work for because they uh, just set the kids in front of uh, TVs all day and there's just tons of places you'd, you'd just cringe at. And then there's other places you're gonna go, oh my God, these people are really creative. I love some of those ideas that they use, right? So it's not a scam. Don't, don't make informational interviewing out to be a, I really want to go to work for you deal, and if I can, if I can hook you, um, go in and just start learning about what they do, okay? All right, who's next? Yeah, oh, hang on. This is Eric Smiley from Hi, Eric. Santa Rosa. Good sure. morning, everyone. Um, by next Friday, I'm going to build my LinkedIn community, get at least five, five contacts on that, and our, the job site conversation series, which is a, a thing by, uh, in the area, uh, from San Francisco, I want to go to at least one of those a month and and more if, if possible. But I'm going to start with at least one of those a month and get my, I'm working with the Lions Blind Center uh, in Oakland and I want to start my weekly meetings again with my contact person there. Okay. All right. Uh, you, he mentions a good mentoring. Um, boy, if you don't have somebody to talk to, on a regular basis to just sort of bounce ideas off of, really get somebody, and get somebody who's working, and get somebody, don't get somebody who's in your situation who's how to work, and, because then all you're gonna hear is, oh God, it's awful out there, man, you know? <laughs> get somebody, <laughs> I mean, you know, it ends up being a pity party, and, you know, get somebody that's, that's, that's out there doing it. I, I must say, I'm really stunned, and, and it must have something to do with where we're at, I guess, but I regularly make the offer to audiences about, you know, look, just contact me, I'd be glad to help out, et cetera, et cetera, and, on average, it's one out of 20 people who actually comes and says, hey, you know, you, you want to talk to me on a regular basis, et cetera, and I say, sure. Um, one out of 20, that's not very good. We've really got to understand, folks, that I know in blindness you tend to always, you know, you don't take other people's advice because usually it's wrong when it comes to your blindness. And so we get out of the habit maybe of, of, of finding a mentor, finding somebody who can help us. So think about it very hard because you really need somebody who can give you that outside reflection. Who's next? Hi, this is Jerry. Jerry. And it's funny you're saying that because my first thing I want to do uh, next week before Friday is go meet up with a, um, my uh, former boss from 1999 and have an informational interview mm -hmm. with her and also go over my resume and any other topic that would come up. Okay. I think that's very important. And um, my other is to continue my education I'm committing myself to um, starting up and learning Google Apps um, and uh, next week. And then next month, I'm going to be working and trying to learn the iPhone apps. Um, that's what I'm committing myself to. Okay. All right. Okay. Excellent. Uh, All right. Who's next? Okay. Go for it. Jessa. Um, 
I am going to do several things. Um, first, I want to update my resume. Um, okay, how long is that going to take? I haven't, I would say, if I would say I could do it in, in a day okay. or maybe two. Um, basically, um, I just finished recently the Blind Leaders Program, and I haven't put anything about what I did there on my resume yet. So I need to do that. I also want to um, get reacquainted with um, LinkedIn because I was on there a couple years ago when I thought I was going to be doing something else for a career that I ended up not deciding to do. So I need to uh, alter my profile and stuff. Um, by next Friday, though, what I would like to be um, doing is um, I want to well, I want to start by talking to people about um, getting into um, career development, and I actually have over this week um, learned that there are um, transition services at, at California School for the Blind that I might want to um, look into helping out with. Mm -hmm. um, are, maybe, no, you said you might want to. Are you gonna well, what I mean to say is I do want to, okay. but right. um, as far as in what capacity, I don't know. I okay, would have we'll to go down go and, and visit with them. Find out what they yeah. need. Sure, we'll yes. go down and visit with them, find out what they do, mm -hmm. find out whether you can support it and whether right. it works, and then find out how you can fit in. Good. And who's your accountability partner? Who, who's who's going to hold your feet to the fire on this? Help um, help you do this. Do. Okay. MPM. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Well, actually, I, I had a, a list of, of things uh, to do next week, but actually, oh, this is George. Thanks, George. Thanks. Um, First on my list, actually, right now, is I want to try and corner Mike May. I've got a product concept I've been working on for several years that um, has dual purpose. Mike just flew out of here in his private helicopter, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> guess I'm going to have to charter one you behind him. cornering him. <laughs> somehow. Um, and uh, try and talk to him for five minutes on this concept. I don't think it would cost him anything, but yeah. OK, but well, what about for you? OK. You well, did he really leave just now? No, I, I don't know whether he's left. Are you sure, Mike? Ow. He's gone. He is gone. Oh, he, he's out of here. Him. He has to move today. Okay. I don't blame him. I would have been gone, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, my plan before that <laughs> <laughs> was uh, I, I want to uh, do some more work freshening up my resumes. Um, uh, and um, let's see. Uh, I need to put some bullet points in it, perhaps. That, make some things stand out a little bit more that need to stand okay. out there. Little things like awards. Listen, everybody, stuff. I'm going to top you for just a second. All of you guys are going to fix up your resumes. If there's really something glaring missing, like your most recent job, fix it. Otherwise, to be quite honest with you, you get about two seconds with that resume. It's not that important, okay? I'm not saying it's not important. Come on, that's not what I said. It's not that important. Don't grow, don't... Don't drive yourself crazy over your resume. Just get a, a resume out there and move on to the next thing because it's you they're going to hire. They're not going to hire your resume. Um, and, and so, so don't, here's two things I see, and I'm not referring this to you, okay? It's to everybody. There's two ways that people avoid actually talking to real people about what's going on in the real world. They sit in front of their computer and get on job boards. God save us all. And they spend hours filling out online applications. And they spend hours tweaking their resumes and all that stuff. And if they're really honest with themselves, it's because to pick up the phone and call the person and have them reject me is more than I can bear. But you know what? I can fill out these online applications, OK? I know it. All right. I talk to my friends about it. I understand. I get it. So here's the rule of thumb I use. Absolutely, you need to have the comfort of, 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 of that computer. And you need to use that computer efficiently, and you need to apply for those online jobs, okay? So use 30% of your energy to do that. 30% of your time ought to be spent with that online stuff. Why do I pick 30%? Well, because 70% of people get jobs through direct contact, and 30% get them through 
the traditional means of apl applying, et cetera. So I just pick out the number 30% and it feels pretty good to me. I tend to focus more on about 10%, but whatever. Um, and then the other 70% of your time needs to be spent getting, know, getting to know the people in the field you want to work in, getting contact with them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Look, let me tell you something. People don't understand how this works. When I'm in the restaurant business and I need the next waiter or waitress or I need the next manager, I don't want to hire somebody I don't know. It's a scary thing to get on, on to, to look through my resume list and go, oh God, here's somebody who has a good resume. She's probably just got out of prison, whatever. Um, you know, I don't know this person. I'd rather hire somebody that I don't, that I do know, or that even one of my employees knows than I would a complete unknown, even if they did a good resume and a good interview. Why? Because you guys go to training classes on how to do good interviews. You can bullshit me nine ways to Sunday. You know, yeah, I figured it out. You know, I talked to him about his uh, his past work, and I really he was really impressed because we all like to hear about ourselves, don't we? And on and on and on it goes. Okay, I'll hire somebody I met, somebody I visited with on the bus. Mike May says I met this lady on the plane. I don't know whether she was the best employee in the world or what she was, but you know what? He knew her. He contacted her. They built a relationship and a rapport, and he hired her. Okay. We want to hire the known quantity, even if it's just a little known. If one of my employees says, hey, listen, I know this guy who used to work for this other guy, and, and, and I know he's out of work, and he, I, think I, I think I heard that he did a good job at such and such a place, and I'm like, oh, bring him over. Send him in, right? I'll put him on the list because I don't like to hire completely unknown quantities. I'm like every other employer. But you can't be in that list if I haven't talked to you. You got me? You need to just get out there and visit. So 70% of jobs get filled that way. The other 30% through the traditional, fill out the application, et cetera. So spend 30% of your time doing all that stuff and spend 70% of your time getting to know the people in the areas that you want to work. How's that? All right, who's next? Well, should I finish up? Or? Did you have anything else? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. You got more? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, anyway, after whether the resume has the bullet points or not, um, <laughs> I will be submitting it to a couple of pla uh, several places next mm -hmm. week, just okay. talking to the people, whether they have jobs or not, just saying, you know, hey, I'm out here. Sure. Something comes up, I want to work. Beyond that, uh, Dexter and I and Dan um, are going to be setting up a, uh, what we're calling is the uh, uh, Career Builders Mastermind Group. And uh, that's the working title for now. Everyone here is invited from this. We don't want this thing to end um, with you know, we don't, we, we don't want the momentum to be lost uh, from this classroom. So it, it'll be doing several things. The first thing we're going to do is pull all our notes together from the class and make those available to everyone who wants it. You'll get an invite from the listserv, right? Is that right, Catherine, to join this thing? Um, uh, when, when the mic comes to Dexter, he'll give you the phone number that you can call in to access. So there will be audio messaging as well as email. And, um, and you'll be able to get the notes through audio or through email uh, from the class. So our first meeting, are, we'll be having uh, monthly and then bi-monthly uh, bi and possibly weekly teleconferences on specific topics uh, starting up in, in two weeks. So um, you'll be able to call into the number Dexter will give you. It, and uh, several of the things we'll be doing beyond just going over a review of this entire uh, summit that we've been through, so it stays in our heads two weeks from now. We'll be looking at uh, doing some other things to help each other with accountability, um, following through on this, and networking, uh, targeting perhaps specific employers to find out as a group everything we can about how to work the front door and the back door approach to getting jobs at those employers, and perhaps working with rehab to see okay. how the stream process can be streamlined right. at some point, I, I'm working together to with you know Joe, so okay. we can get us 800 people hired per month. I'm done, sorry. Uh, no, that's all right. it's all right. I, I just need to cut you off because we've got a lot of people to get yeah. through. So and th this good. is Kathy. We've got 15 minutes to get around the room. So your homework, <laughs> right. so, yeah. so your so homework, let's hear it your quick. Ho your, your homework was to have it in your head and ready to go this morning, sir. Yeah, so quick and dirty. <laughs> all right, short and sweet. I've got a few jobs to apply to. Who's I'm I? Gonna, Sarah. Sarah, hey, how are you? I'm going to call Mike Bullis next <laughs> week. I'm going to yeah. build my network and find, I've been reminded of a lot of my old blind friends through this, so I need to find them all, which probably will take a call to like the LCB and stuff. So um, I'm going to build up my LinkedIn and make sure everybody here is on it, right? 
okay. and then um, make sure that I apply to these jobs that I have to apply to like by Tuesday, so. Okay, good. All right, it's Connie. Um, let's see, besides the LinkedIn thing, like Sarah just mentioned, um, building my network, um, what does that mean, building your network? Building network, oh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah. it's mostly, you know, as a result of this camp, uh, camp retreat, summit, um, just continuing to build my connections and okay. relationships with blind and visually impaired people like myself, um, and also a grant writing class. I, I'm very interested, I, I'm a good writer, but having the grant and the funding for my ideas and others' ideas in the room mm -hmm. to um, develop some programs through the Ed Roberts campus and the agencies okay. within. Um, very interested, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, who's next? Go ahead, Mary. Hi, I'm going to, uh, oops, Mary. Mary. <laughs> I'm going to uh, be working on my calendar to uh, keep it very precise and uh, complete and Update it, uh, you know. Update and adjust it. Help me out. I, I don't understand to. what that means. Pardon? I don't understand what that means exactly. What, well, what's wrong uh, with your calendar? Uh, so, so that I well, to in uh, to include all of the things that I need to do and get okay. keep a keep a, a keep my, an accurate calendar. My object, yeah, accurate. Oh, and keep right. my objectives and goals. Yeah. And keep a busy calendar. Order, too. yeah. Keep yeah. a busy calendar and keep. A, things that I need to defer, I can right. keep them okay. moved up and not Good. just let them drop Schedule your first activity for away. about 6.30 every morning. It'll help right. you. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. and, right. and then I have, um, I have a lot of work to do with deepening my, uh, my technology skills, and particularly I okay. wanted to work on my uh, uh, typing. Uh, Touch typing. So All right, it should take you about eight weeks to get up to around 60 words a minute. Take one of these typing courses that pushes you along pretty quickly. The quicker mm -hmm. you do the typing, the better. 60 right. is a pretty good number for you to be at. 60 words with accuracy is great. Um, it puts you way ahead of most of the people in the field today. Who's next? Okay. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm Carol. I'm gonna call the uh, disability rights advocates and log on to Martindale Hubble and update my LinkedIn contacts and take a typing class. What's Martindale Hubble gonna get you? I'm sorry, you're gonna log on? What happens when you yeah, get Yeah, I'm gonna look for the civil rights lawyers. Gotcha, okay, thanks. All right. Okay. All right, Tommy. Uh, hi, Mike, I'm Tommy. Hi. I'm gonna return to Kate Williams' class where I'm a student and okay. on, on Tuesday and continue to perfect my interviewing skills and by next Friday, the 16th of September, I will have sent out my resume and cover letter to another company, and I will be accountable to Carol behind me here with Great. a phone call or an email. Great. Okay. And thank you. Who's next? All right, Andrea. Hi, this is Andrea. Hi, Andrea. And I'm going to start up my LinkedIn account. Okay. I'm going to do some follow-up with some people who have sent me some interest in wanting to speak with me about job opportunities. Okay. And fill out some more applications. What kind of job opportunities, Andrea? I have a dental administrative assistant. Great. Okay. Good. Who next? Hi, this is Ramona, and I am going to expand my LinkedIn uh, account. I'm also going to do a market analysis. How are you going to expand that? I'm going to go and add. Okay. Connect to other people. So you can do all that tonight. Then what are you going to do? Oh, and then, okay. Yes, I can. You're right. You're <laughs> right. I can get that all done tonight. And uh, I'm also going to start over the weekend. Uh, doing a market analysis on an idea that I have that okay. I have shared with um, Brian and I also am going to uh, with my existing uh, network of other uh, health insurance agents and general agencies uh, present this idea to them and uh, get their buy-in and I'm gonna give my card to Connie because I may need her to write a grant for me okay. and um, <laughs> And then I'm also going to go on the various websites for the different blind associations, those that I can join. I'll look and see what their mission and vision statement is and possibly join and uh, make contact with them. Okay. Let me, let me say a word about ideas. Uh -huh. 
I don't think more than one in every 10 or 15 of my ideas has ever worked out. And the worst mistakes I always make, and this doesn't necessarily apply to you in this instance, is saying, I'm going to go enlist these people in my idea. You know, yeah. you don't know yet whether it's a good one. So what I say is I'm going to go out and research the idea. I'm going to visit with people about it. Barely one in 10 or 15 of my ideas ever survives to see the light of day because it isn't quite right or it isn't what the market needs right now or it or it's being done by somebody else in a, in a way that, that that I don't I can't beat et cetera et cetera et cetera and what happens is there's part of us that has this sort of sort of Horatio Alger thing about us that says if I just believe in my idea hard enough okay then it'll work and and I did that with this stupid motorcycle shop and gas station back in in the day uh, well, if know, I just I, believe <laughs> enough that it'll work even though I don't have the money and I don't have the brains and I don't know what the hell I'm doing I know I can make it work, you know. I, it, that just doesn't happen in the real world. Look, Mrs. Fields, everybody's always like, well, you know, Mrs. Fields, she, she just started making cookies and she's worth millions today. <laughs> well, you know, she also had a degree in manage, business management and she also had a lot of other stuff going on. Um, Bill, what, Bill, what's that? Right, and, 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 and the other thing is the reason... The reason we tell these stories about Mrs. Fields and Bill Gates and, and all these other people is because they're one in 10 million, not because they happen every day. They don't happen every day. Most of us just try an idea and it comes out somewhere in the middle of, you know, good to fair and we go, well, that was pretty good. All right. Next. Well, you know, Mike, when I yes. started sharing with you, I did say market analysis. You did. I know. I did. I know. I and know. I have right. shared my idea yeah. with a couple of people here Wonderful. who think that is a good idea. Great. So yeah. I always think positive, not negative. Uh, absolutely. Thank and, you. and that's good. You're right. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Yep. Okay. We're going to move at warp speeds here. Going around. Far away. Um, hi, Mike. I, I'm Kim. Hi, Kim. At, hi. Hi. Um, by Monday, I'm going to start my volunteer work at CSB, um, and I'm also hoping either that day or Tuesday I'm going to contact Linda Perel and talk to her about social work because I want to get a bachelor's in social work. Um, and Wednesday, I'm going to call um, Cal State Hayward and San Francisco State to figure out what's required as far as a bachelor's, what they're looking for. Um, you know, I need to ask some questions of disability, the disabilities office, find out what they provide, that kind of stuff, so that. Once I've got my transferable classes, I can apply to those schools. Okay, no take a lesson from your earlier colleagues. Get these things on your calendar so that every day you get up and you look at that calendar and go, those are the things I said I was going to do today. I'll get them done. I, I say if I didn't write it down, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, Because don't hold that in your mind. It's a wonderful plan, so get, get it written down somewhere, and then you can look every day. Okay, Lisa. Great. Next. Hi, I'm Lisa. Um, I am going to join um, the listserv for the East Bay California Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. Great. Be they have a lot of job leads and networking opportunities. Um, I am going to get my application turned in for being a Braille teacher. I don't think I'll get it, but, I'll, but I love to read Braille. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't, wait a minute, I don't understand. You're going to turn in an application with who to be a Braille teacher? Um, I'm going to mail it in. You have to, to who? mail it. You have to mail it in to the selections unit at Department of Rehab in, San in Sacramento. And how many Braille teachers are they looking for right now? One. They are. Where at? OCB. Okay. Uh, all right. So, so yeah. All right. So, who else are you going to apply to for being a Braille teacher? You know, well, that's not my um, okay. that's not my um, general career goal. Okay. So. Because I mean, there's tons of places you could go teach Braille, by the way, around this country. So if that's really what you wanted to do, I could give you about 50 places to to go visit and talk to. Yeah. Really? Sure. All right. So let's go on next. Okay. Next. Thank you. This is Julie Bentley. I was just hey, going to say that there's some people around here that have some stuff like I'm going to improve my mm -hmm. interview skills. I'm going to improve my typing skills. That's great. How will you know when you're there? Right. Make it measurable. Right. I'm right. going to do three mock interviews, and then I'm done, and I hit the road. Right. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. Hi, this is Nicole. Hi. I'm going to um, start a blog. I'm going to... Start a blog talking about what? Um, just m different things that interest me, just to get okay. my writing skills gotcha. um, okay. going again. I'm um, going to gather, I'm going to type up all the information I got here, from here, from the summit, um, and kind of put it together into a, um, an article. I have to decide um, how many words, because it's so much information. Okay, so you're going to write an article. What else? 
and I'm going to sit down and write all of uh, all of what I know and my skills and hard skills, soft skills, and kind of try and interpret what type of job it fits into. You're doing a skills inventory. You need a guide yes. to do that. Have you, are you working with Kate and her? Yeah, class I'm working or? with Kate. Okay, wonderful. So I can. And you guys ought to take Tuesday. a look seriously at the what colors your parachute and that sort of job, yes. the skills inventory, yes. and see how it all matches out. Good. Yes. All right. Who's next? Okay. And you're also going to call somebody at the lighthouse. Yes. LM, yes. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Christina. Okay, if I can find it. I wrote it down. Hi, Mike. It's Christina from hey. the waterfall last night. Sure. How are you? Good. Okay, I wrote, next steps. Um, Google spas in the area and find out their services. And if they offer the kind of massage modalities that I want to do, I'm going to call them. I'm going to call the To what purpose, Christina? What are you going to call them for? to um, see if I can either, uh, if they're hiring or if I can create a position for myself. Okay. Um, call the local yoga studios and see if they offer this kind of thing or if I can create it. Um, I'm going to call a spa Julie recommended. Reset my LinkedIn password and begin and continue building my network. Um, somebody here gave me a referral that Google's hiring for massage ther therapists. I'm going to look that up. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get this done in a week, you guys. Uh, Brian okay, gave so me. Okay, so put some dates on some of these activities. Most of those things you just said you could get all done by next Friday or something. Not happening. So, yeah, I'd like to. Um, I've got a few others that I wrote down, but I would sure. like to have all of this, these things done. Um, I would say within about 30 days. That's that's good. Yeah, and then and, and sometime during the next 30 days, put down at about 15 days. What am I gonna do for the 30 that come up? Okay, because there's. I used to do this. I would have this great plan for a month, and then I'd get to the end of the month and go, oh, man, whoops. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> and and so, so think about, you know, what am I going to do next month and kind of build it out a little bit. Some of the, what happens this month will guide you on it, you know. So, so, so wait until about half the month is over before you start thinking about next month. Good job. Thanks. Who's next? Okay, Dan. Um, Dan. Kate and I are going to work on my resume for the next week or two. Okay. And... Um, then I'm going to join LinkedIn, uh, and uh, uh, by Friday I will have 20 contacts. I think that's a reasonable um, thing to do, and um, then work on my during that week. Uh, the first week I will also work on my skills. Okay, good. What skills? Whoops. Wait a minute. Sorry. Um, uh, 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 tying in uh, the 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 basic skills that will go on all. Um, all the versions of my resumes, and then the different skills uh, that pertain to specific types of jobs, either in government or administration or in uh, PR, fundraising type stuff. Okay. Who's next? Hi, Mike. This is Sky from Fresno. Hi, Sky. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you and the other Mike for the wonderful and motivational presentations. Uh, I went to a lot of motivational presentations, but this is the best. So thank you for that. Uh, my first plan is to, uh, in this weekend, plan to uh, live the life you guys live, go through the struggle and go through that. So hopefully, but in, by Monday, I get to live in financially independent. <laughs> but uh, the, the second goal is to uh, contact a supervisor. My goal is to become a rehab counselor. So uh, I'll try to contact the supervisor. And uh, Okay, remember, there's lots of states. There's lots of rehab counselors around the world and around the country. Yes. Um, so start calling around to the various states. Find out what kind of positions they have, what kind of rural and or urban. Find, but develop a list of four or five questions, and you can talk to rehab counselors in several states. Mm -hmm. Get a feeling for what's going on. Don't limit yourself to, you know, boy, there just haven't been any openings here in Santa Rosa lately. You know? Sure. So, and, 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 yeah. and as a person who loves assistive technology, I might want to explore that career as well. So okay. thank you for Good. the presentation. Sure. You bet. All right, thank you, Sky. Um, Brian McCallan speaking. Um, my first step is to see my rehab counselor, Department of Rehabilitation, Rosa Gomez in Oakland, on Tuesday and rewrite my plan for a career, my Damn. individual plan for employment. Do you have a, an appointment on Tuesday? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Phew. I was going to say you probably wouldn't get one if you didn't. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> and, 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 and we're going to rewrite my individual plan for employment. And does she know that? Yes, she does. Oh, good. Okay. All right. I, I'm, I'm going to email her again to confirm. Excellent. Okay. Um, I also, um, so I'm going to rewrite my, so I'm going to listen to her suggestions, sure. um, rewrite my plan, get it signed on Tuesday, 
in, a, in an action. And then um, during the week, by Friday, I'm going to um, finish editing this audio interview for the Lighthouse podcast and for ACB Radio, a pilot episode for a Speaking Out for the Blind talk show about okay. Okay. blind and visually impaired I'm gonna, I'm going to make you move faster. I understand okay, okay, you're going to sure. edit the program. Sure. Now, no, what no else? problem. Yeah. What okay. Yeah. Then the third thing is... Um, um, uh, go go look for the next job fair that's being held in the barrier with radio and video broadcast. Okay, go to a job fair. All right. What else? That and it? and that's it. That's, that's great. Three Good steps. Three steps. Excellent. Okay. okay. Yeah. I won't even. I I won't comment. Yeah. Yeah. Job fairs uh, pretty low on my list of places where people actually get jobs, but it doesn't hurt to go there and mingle a little bit. It doesn't hurt to go there and maybe see what networking and so on. But. Um, I'm still looking for the person who ever got a job at one of those job fairs. Uh, that's not to say it doesn't happen, particularly in what I would just call sort of factory jobs, or, or not factory, but sort of mass jobs where they're trying to hire 300 new people to do X, Y, or Z call centers kinds of things. It, it does happen at job fairs, but it's, it's rare. And so don't, don't overload yourself with job fairs. Just use them occasionally, because like I say, they help you get out and they help you keep from falling asleep on the couch, right? Yeah. Good. Hey, Mike. Uh, this yeah. is Charles Jackson. Uh, I'll keep. The, I'll try and keep this brief. Yep. Uh, I'm going to continue my effort to end my kind of self-imposed uh, isolation regarding my recent vision. All right. Loss. What's step one to doing that? Okay. Well, step one in my case would be to follow up on some of the uh, leads that have come in over the last few days since I've been uh, at this event. Gotcha. Uh, right. Number two, uh, I'm going to make. I'm going to commit to myself to make at least 50 cold calls a day to my existing contact list. For Christ's sake, I am a recruiter. I know how to find jobs. He knows people. I yeah. have a network, and right. I welcome everybody to connect to my network. I've got a current LinkedIn network of approximately 3,000 people in a lot of different yeah, disciplines. And I just haven't really worked that as efficiently as I would tell someone else to sure. if they were in my case. Okay. Uh, and I'm probably going to do some volunteer work to get right. myself in the mix and to meet other people outside of my existing uh, sphere of, of close personal friends. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Okay. Good. Thanks. All right. Shamika, I'm coming to you. Shamika, thank no. you for the LinkedIn hit. I got you. I signed you. I, uh, I confirmed you last night. Go ahead. Um, certain things I will do. I will follow up on the interview I had about a month ago again to see if they made their decision. Um, I'm going to call the people for two other interviews I'm supposed to be setting up. Good. And then my third one is to, I guess, get 70 people on my LinkedIn. Well, it's not 70 altogether, but I mean, it's like I already have 60 people. So oh, I guess so you're going to add people. 10 people. Yeah, all right, you're going to do all that by when? Um, the end of the month. Well, the first the first two by, like, next week, but the, the sure. last one by the end of the month. Okay. All right. Who's okay, next? Okay, I'm coming around. Josh. Okay, thank you, uh, Kathy. And um, I'm going to do a couple things. The first thing I'm going to do is I've been doing a little bit of volunteer work through the volunteers um, as um, Volunteer Legal Services of San Francisco, and I'm going to um, spend some time going online. They have some manuals that you can go through to look at the law and expand your knowledge. Okay, And good. the reason why I'm going to do No, this no, I don't care what the reason is. Go ahead. And then the <laughs> next... Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm really pleased that you're going to do it. And, and, yeah. and I'm going to do it before, before next Friday. Right, wonderful. I'm sorry and then the have. next thing I'm also going to do is that there's a woman I know who has been a uh, practicing mediator and I want to do that work and I'm going to contact her and try to set up an informational interview. It's a great field. Check out a lot more mediators. And by the way, the la and, and t mediators are love to talk um, so you can interview all of them several times. And also ask the mediators when you talk to them, the last question you want to ask is, who else should I talk to in this field that could give me some good information? Okay, right. and that'll lead you to more. Boom, next. Who's next? Okay, Sunil, you're next. What's the next three things you're going to do? Come on in. Uh, the next three things I'm going to do is by um, today's what Friday, so by next Thursday, um, I'll sign up with LinkedIn. Okay. I'll have um, at least you know minimum of 30 people on there. That's assignment one. Assignment two is um, assignment two. Three things you want, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. okay, if you don't know, let's let's go on. But yeah, but, but note on. that you don't know, and without a plan, uh, there's a problem. Okay, you need okay. to get a plan. Get a plan. Good. All right, I'm gonna make a list of all my um, donors that hasn't. Yes. Um, this is Dexter, right? Yeah, Dexter. All sorry, right, Dexter. that haven't pledged. Um, secondly, I'm gonna call all of them. This is all by next Friday. And thirdly, I'm gonna get the people that volunteered to do some reading on my system. Um, and really quickly, let me give the number for the. The conference call on the 18th, it's um, Sunday the 18th, 7 to 9, the number. And telephone, Ka telephone number, quick. Kathy would also be telephone emailing number. this. 231-732-7070, 231-732-7070. Right. Friday the 18th at? Pong 99 Pong. A what? Seven to nine. All right, ladies and listen, anybody, you can, you're going to get the email list from everybody to today. Too. Send them the list. Who's next? All right, I'm coming around here. Who's next? And I'm in, uh, Mike has got a job, so I, what's your next step? You're going to pass? Well, my okay. next, my <laughs> next step, my next step literally came a few minutes ago. We just got an email. He wants the other forms of ID for the I-9 card, which we have on the computer. So all we have Great. to do is scan it in, sign it, and fax it over to him. Good, okay. Right. So I'm doing Congratulations. that and doing the packing and yeah. setting up the apartments. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Sarah, what are you going to do? You're going to help pack? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to research the business enterprise program requirements in Pennsylvania and decide if I want to go through the program again. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Pennsylvania. Thanks, All right. Great. Derek. Okay. Uh, first, I'm going to unwind. Um, and then I'm going to uh, get LinkedIn. And then I'm going to... Uh, 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 contact my partner Brian and uh, see how he's doing. All right. <laughs> All that by when? Friday. <laughs> next Friday. Okay. Yeah, next Friday. Go ahead. Next. Okay. I'm gonna. Um, I have a lot of contacts, so I'm gonna send like ten. I uh, contact uh, my ten or contact that O one. Send him a no in my uh, resume. Number two, I'm going to. Uh, I attending an IBM event at uh, San Jose for free food, but uh, and also networking. <laughs> Uh, to and I see if I can meet some uh, hiring manager or VP there. Uh, number three is uh, do my website uh, updated. Well, and four is uh, uh, get over my phobia for doing call call. I'm gonna try to practice a call call. Bye. Good. Okay. All this by when? when Next, Next week. week. Next Friday. Okay. Good. This Next. is David. David. Uh, I have three things. I'm going to uh, continue working on updating my LinkedIn contacts. I'm trying to break into the deafness community as somebody who wants to work with that community. Mm -hmm. There is a seminar that's going to take place next week. I'm going to attend that seminar to get more contacts. Mm -hmm. And lastly, probably, and I will do it this week, probably Tuesday, I want to get my resume squared away and I want to present it to, uh, to uh, Kate. Uh, to have her look it over. Yeah, good. It's a great idea to get somebody else to look at it. Who's next? I'm Farhang Mike. Uh, we just met outside yeah, regarding sure. the book and the crow. The crow pulled your book, but the crow died. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You found the crow, not the book, correct? I got the book too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is send five emails every day with 20, 10 questions in each of them, you know, 10 questions in each of them to you. Every day. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say if anybody sends me an email with 10 questions, they're going to wait till hell freezes over before I answer it. So <laughs> to keep you busy. If you ask me more than two or three questions, then uh, okay. you're in trouble. All right. Just to keep All right what else you got? Uh, what are you going to okay, do? But no, I'm going to apply to the Department of Education, which Brian uh, recommended, and to the government job. There was some collection jobs at IRS. Okay. Thank you. Good. <laughs> right, oh. and you can't leave, Kate. <laughs> Mike here, and I'm going to. I'm working part time, so during the rest of the time, I'm going to, as everybody else said, brush up my resume and uh, make some phone calls and send them out to various places for computer. Okay, work. specify it a little more for yourself later. What kind of phone calls and who you're going to send them out to? Get really specific. That'll help you. Okay. Oh. Next. Oh. Yeah. Good. Great. All right. Hey there, everyone. It's it's it's. Hi, Lauren. Oh, Lauren. Yeah. Hey. Um, okay. Three things I will do. Step one, join uh, 
LinkedIn as I am and, and not on it. Step two, talk to my job coach about this wonderful retreat, tell him all the great things I learned. Step three, call the supervisor that I re was referred to from Community Violence Solutions, start talking about um, volunteer opportunities over there. Finally, step four, I'll just say this lastly, start finding more Spanish interpreters who work with the Hispanic population to find out what the job is. Wonderful, good, really all right. Great. And Thanks. all that by when, Lauren? Oh, start all of this will happen by next Friday. And finally, step five, sorry, prepare for my social work oral exam interview. Great. Yay. Congratulations, excellent, all right. Okay, th this is Lori. Hi. Um, number one is uh, add more people to my LinkedIn list. Um, got a lot of people here to add. Um, number two is I'm going to look at a website that um, Jerry recommended to me about uh, looking at call centers. Um, because that's you know my passion. I I like to help people on the phone, so I'm okay. gonna go look at that. And number two is on Monday afternoon. I have an appointment with my podiatrist, and I'm going to talk to him and try to get some names of of uh, maybe people he can recommend for me to call to try to to try to find some receptionist receptionist work. Okay. Okay. Oh, right here. All right. I'm Kelly, and I'm gonna be. Um, Practicing uh, interviewing skills. Uh, I'm actually I set up a role play um, for tomorrow, so I'll be doing that. And then um, on Wednesday afternoon, I'm gonna actually going to be doing an informational interview with um, Anne, who's in Walnut Creek, and she runs a uh, Braille production business. So I'm going to see like how she starts that. Right. Um, and then I'm going to be studying. Uh, the JAWS, um, so I can get certified in JAWS training. Okay. Quick questions about, quick, quick things about uh, informational interviewing. Some of the basic questions. What are the good things about this business this, that you're in? What, what really works well? What do you see in the future of it? Next thing is, what are the clouds? First, you're talking about the stars, aren't you? The good things. What are the clouds on the horizon? What are the issues that make this business difficult? What are the problems with it, right? And then, uh, don't forget that last question. Who else can I talk to about this field? All right, and then the first question is a wonderful one, and that's always, how did you get in this field? Because what you're gonna discover is, it just happens magically somehow. They fall into it, and they, and, cause most of their answers are gonna start out with, well, you know, that's really funny you should ask, but, all right? And they'll tell you some weird story, and you'll go, whoa, it was just accidental, wasn't it? Yeah, all right, who's next? Um, Sorry. Uh, this is Cindy, and um, I'm already doing the internship for the lighthouse in Marin, but in the building um, at the lighthouse uh, in Marin, we, uh, we're in a senior center, so there I have um, access to other nonprofit organizations, right. and there is another job opportunity, a possibility, so I will be trying to nail down the job description uh, for that position, and also uh, doing an informational interview with um, the woman who would possibly be um, the co my co-worker to find out exactly the essential skills that you need for that position. Okay. Plus, I am starting um, a refresher course on Excel on Tuesday. Great. So. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Is that it? Kathy, I mean. Yeah, we got two more. Two more. All righty. Hi, Mr. Mike. Hey. Megan. Um, <laughs> well, I have a couple things I'm going to do. Okay. Um, one, I'm going to keep in contact with Kathy and Brian over here because I guess yeah. they have a project for me. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and contact um, some of my inner contacts at Blind Baby since I did an internship with them and see if they know about any um, elementary or any, any children for me to tutor. Okay, um, okay. And... I should probably go on my LinkedIn because I haven't been on there for a while. Okay. Do some informational interviewing with other children's tutors, that kind of thing. Get mm -hmm. out there. Find out what's going on with the field. Find out how much you can charge. Find out uh, where they get their referrals. Go think. put together a list of questions. Go out and talk to a bunch of tutors. Find out what you can find out. Okay. Yeah. And Who I else? need to contact yeah. Joe Xavier, okay. too. Okay. Contact Joe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Coming back here. Here we go. This is Michael Moore. Um, I have three things that I'm going to do, the first of which is um, buy a copy of What Color Is Your Parachute and go through that. Okay. 
Um, secondly, I am going to work on my LinkedIn um, and finish, get my profile to um, at least 100% because I can finish that. Um, and the third thing I'm going to do is hire a job coach. Okay. Good. All right, and last but not least is Mr. Axel. What, me? Yeah, um, what are you going to do? All right, so my name is Axel Meyer, and uh, so I came to the conclusion here uh, regarding the Skype call of yesterday with uh, Mr. Wurzel or something. Uh, I need information yeah. later. Uh, I get it. Um, so I stick uh, with my uh, old uh, subsisting business and put that, uh, push that forward, meaning uh, creating more online presence by uh, signing up to uh, you know uh, social networks like LinkedIn and uh, the like in order to promote my business after studying the uh, policy and procedures thoroughly. That's very important. And uh, yeah, then you know increase the uh, you know connections that that way. And uh, the next thing is uh, to do some research uh, regarding handcrafted uh, 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 trades. Uh, handcrafted and what? Handcrafted trades. Handcraft, you know, uh -huh. like yeah. what uh, sure. uh, the m m Mr. Wurzel. Okay. Uh, I got you. Trades. I'm sorry. Trades. I, I yeah, remember. I mean, sorry, regarding okay. handcrafted blue collar, Good. that kind okay, of stuff. Okay, more because research on that. That's More great. research on that to okay. find some viable uh, uh, solution for me to turn okay. this into a real... Is that business. one of your skills? You got a good handcraft sense? Oh, uh, totally. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, great. Absolutely. All right, are we done, folks? And that will be done hand. by Friday okay. next. Give yourselves yeah. a hand, folks. You did good. All right. Listen. Okay. Um, we, All right, so we went, uh, we, went way, we went way over time. My apology. I, uh, I know we've got a couple other issues. I want to just say one final thing. The genius behind this week, the genius that has really pulled this all together and, and came up with the inspiration for it is Brian Bashan. Let's give him a huge hand. Um, he's, been the, he's been the guy behind the scenes that, that makes it all happen, and, and I just can't tell you how Im impressed I've been all week with, with the whole process. I want to thank you all for inviting the, this uh, kid from Southeast Portland in to be with you this week. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Michael.